So let's look at the LSTM code. First thing is we load the data. So this is completely the same as before. And then we need to initialize the parameters. And again, the parameter initializer is the same as before, just that we have one extra set of weight vectors, right? So again, we initialize, you know, two with, you know, normal Gaussians plus, you know, one, the, the bias being zero. And they just have, you know, three groups of parameters, right? So the input gate, the forget gate, and the output gate, and the candidate cell parameters. This block there. And then, of course, I need the outputs. There we go. And so now I stuff everything together, and presto, I get my parameters with the gradients attached, and that's what I return. Okay. So this is, you know, this is getting boring, right? This is exactly the same code as what you've seen before, just now, you know. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to initialize the state. And well, this does nothing else but just return, you know, in this case now, two vectors of zeros. Okay. Why am I now returning two vectors of zeros rather than one? Exactly, perfect. So this is exact, we have a state, and we have the memory cell, and both things need to be carried through. So remember the memory cell is something that just sits there and you know, does things in the background, I can't really read it directly, but I still need to carry it with me. And what we'll see is now as we look at the actual code later, that now the hidden state will actually decompose things into those two pieces. So here's where the magic happens. So these are my parameters. I, decom you know, I just decompose it, and this can be done nicely in Python. And here now, I decompose my state into hidden and memory. Okay. Now the outputs are empty again, and now this is basically just the LSTM math. So I have my three gates, I, F, and O, all nicely with sigmoids. I have C tilde, that's the candidate memory with a tang that operates on everything, right? You can see the green part of the bracket being, you know, referring to all of that. I then you know, have the actual memory cell by, you know, using the candidate and the corresponding forget gate. And then here's the output. And there we go. Then you just return this. So this is really just verbatim what we had on the slides, but well, just a bit more detail. And then training goes in exactly the same way as before. Number of steps, all of that is the same. And since we are a little bit out of time, as in actually pretty much out of time, I'm not going to run the training run. But what you would see if you were to run it for long enough is that it would work ever so slightly better than a GRU. Um, yeah, so now you're asking yourself how to do that in Gluon. Well, the only difference to what we saw before is that now you don't invoke rnn.gru, but rnn.lstm, and presto, you have your LSTM. The other thing to observe is that this is slower. So before that, we had like 0.3 seconds, and now we have 0.48. And here it's 0.9 rather than 0.7 you know, or something like that, or 0.8. Basically, okay, my laptop is doing something in the background, so it's slowing it down, but basically the time would have been about that. And so you run this and you get your LSTM. Good. Now, doing anything fancy beyond that is what we will cover next Tuesday. 
then we'll go deep, we'll go bi-directional, and we will probably get a little bit of a chance to look at word embeddings. So thanks for today. Take care and see you next week.